Today is aquascaping day at Green Aqua. I'm going to build a 60H tank. H stands for high. And it's so high, actually so tall, that maybe Aaron should scape it. Right? <laughs> Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. I so love the proportions of this tank and uh, actually when people who do not know a lot about aquascaping look at this size of tank, they usually think that it's much bigger than it is in liters or in gallons because the height of the tank will increase the impact on the viewer. And I would like to take the opportunity to talk a little bit about the shameless cloning. And this is something that uh, this this combination of words I learned from Monish Pabrai, who is actually a very, very good value investor. And I really like the way that he thinks about the investing techniques. And I want to bring that idea into aquascaping as well. There was a Juan Puchades masterclass here on Green Aqua, and he actually mentioned the fact of cloning, copying other aquascapers uh, in his presentation. And he told us that it's a very risky method. You take the idea and try to do it better, super risky, and you need to do it better than before. But I think it is not risky when you think of your first planted tank or you just started aquascaping and you do not want to uh, submit that to work into the IAPLC. I actually think that copying others and getting inspiration from other planted tanks is, is quite a good idea. I did that before with the uh, 45H tank that I built a couple of weeks ago and I quite liked it. It was inspired by three aquascapers that have built a beautiful tank before and I thought that I'm going to copy that tank. So today what I'm going to do is copy that copy. So without further ado, let's start working and let's bring in the hardscape because I already finished it yesterday. <laughs> All right, so here's the scape. We're ready. We can start working. It looks very similar to the one that uh, I built in the 45H, right? Okay, so a customer came into Green Aqua very old customer of ours. Actually, I've built a tank for him many, many years ago, maybe 10 years ago. And he saw that tank and he said that I want something similar, but I wanted the top to be visible and outside the aquarium. So I did this for him. I took about 10 hours to build it in total yesterday. I started with taking these branches. These are actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine separate branches. And I took the main branches, these two, and I glued them together. The biggest challenge here was to fit the wood onto the top of the tank without obstructing the view for the light. Because the light is a Chihiros RGB 60 light and it's gonna go in front of it. And I had to like cable tie this leg of this light onto that wood to keep it in place to make sure that the wood is behind the light. And then I started to cable tie these wood pieces together. And then after I cable tied them, I applied the paper towel liquid super glue combination onto them. And that's how the main structure of the wood took shape. Okay, let's talk about the wood structure idea. This is the water level, the bottom of the black tape. The part above the water level, when you only take these first two branches into consideration, is perfect. It looks great, right? But there's nothing going on below the water. Only the two trunks of these two main pieces of wood are visible. So I had to build something that would actually give some good detail to the tank. Also, please observe that this one is in golden ratio here, right here. And then I started to build the other one because I needed something to stretch to the left side of the tank as well. So I put these one and two branches here. 
I applied the wireframe here, the problem is with this frame is that this frame was pre-made at Green Aqua and it's actually a 60p frame. So I needed to raise it somehow. After I raised the structure a little bit to be exactly in position, I put the first stone underneath. This is the first stone that I applied here. This whole structure stands on this one stone here. I fixed it at this point and then also fixed it to the light here. So these two points were holding the whole structure in place. And then I started to build this whole thing around it and it took a lot of time for me to figure out how to do it. I glued the rocks onto this uh, plastic bottom that will hold everything in place and then I started to glue them together as well but it turned out when I moved it for the first time it turned out that it was not enough so instead of just using the liquid super glue paper towel combination I started to use the impa glue because remember that we will need to take this whole thing into the tank at once Right now, this whole thing is really stable, so I can just take it and I can just basically raise it from anywhere like that, see? And then I use the fine filter mesh to cover the holes because the whole chamber will actually be filled with the ADA PowerSend Advance and the ADA Amazonia version 2. I'm pretty sure that the tank will look similar to the tank that, uh, that I built and that Matty and Ozzy have built many years ago. I think that you will not do the same type of aquarium for the second time. I don't know, is this looking similar to, to the tank that I built in the 45? Similar. A little bit similar, right? Yeah. But not the same. Not right? the same. It's not like people are going to tell you, like, Volage, why do you copy people? Why do you copy yourself? No. Well, actually, the process itself is really fulfilling while building a tank like this by building the hardscape 10 hours pass by like like two hours but i've been talking about that topic in the, the psychology of aquariums video before we're going to link that in the description for those of you who did not see that so maybe you're interested in what's happening in my mind when when i build planted tanks Why did I do this? Why did I do this whole gluing thing? When I built the 45H tank, I placed everything into the tank and then I started to glue the rocks together in the tank. I couldn't fit my hands in. It was a smaller tank, but the whole structure is quite big. Planting was a problem. And with that said, another problem that I had, this is the 45 by 30 tank. And actually the size of this plate is 25. So I have five more centimeters to play with. Okay, and learning from my mistakes, I will have to start the planting now before I move it. So I'm gonna put in all the epiphyte plants. I'm going to start with the small bucephalandras that go at the bottom of the tank. So I kind of started to like this way of exposed hardscape construction. It looks much easier it seems much easier it takes more time because you need to glue everything together and you cannot just build it like that but at the same time it's much more convenient i was thinking a lot whether i should use these branches here and i thought that it's a good idea to have them because that will continue the line of this wood downwards it will connect this line the whole thing looks a little bit more balanced if you have this wood here we can move to the bigger Bucephalandra types now, which is the wavy green and also the Kedagang. The Kedagang is a reddish plant and the wavy leaf is a greenish plant. I think the reds should not be in the center. I think the reds should be at the bottom here. And then after we're ready, we can move on with some green and I think that it would be a better idea if I would have a different leaf structure close to the tree, close to the reds. It gives a good contrast with that. And before I forget and before we move on, I have the trident, the ferns. I'm going to use the green aqua gel type super glue and I'm just gonna just put this here and we can put it together with the whole structure. Mm -hmm. 
this part visually is going to be heavier and it will attract the attention because we have the uh, golden ratio point here. This is very important. Okay, and then we still have a lot of Anubias. Tripartita is here. So now you see the water level. And if we want this guy to creep out, then we will need to tie this right here. So I've got the uh, ADA moss cotton and the Dua Terra line here. And the difference between these two is that the moss cotton would probably decompose in the water in the long run. So it can only be used with plants that you're pretty sure that would attach themselves to rocks. This needs a lot more maintenance, but it's going to be fine because you can just trim it. Okay, Gary, I just realized that I will need a lot more from, from either Anubias or Bucephalandras because I will need to probably put some forest kind of look. Now all that remains to be done is to try to use these Bucephalandras on the ends maybe. So we're missing more plants, obviously. What we're doing now is we're using the uh, Monte Carlo. Question? Yes. What about this big hole here? Yeah, what about that? <laughs> Good question. There you go. See, this is all we needed. This is all we needed. It's quite cool, right? We're building an aquarium outside of an aquarium. The balance with the leaves and the plants on the wood is cool. Everything is nice. You can have all the branches visible still. You have empty branches too to accentuate the lines. So I'm gonna lift this, we remove this, and then we bring in the, mm -hmm. there you go. Then we bring in the aquarium. This is an ADA 60H tank that we actually have put. That's it is high. Okay, let's go in. Not scratch the glass. Perfect. Gary. Now the moment of truth. Ladies and gentlemen, drum roll. Don't worry about that. Voila! You've got some space here. You've got some space for maintenance here as well. Space on that side, space on the right side, and also space in the front. I'm using the ADA substrate system because that's one of the most stable substrates. And now comes the Amazonia version 2 on top. I will add the sand now. I'm not gonna wait until I spray the plants a couple more times and then all the uh, water will flow onto the bottom glass and then the sand will get wet and it's more difficult to manage. I'm using the ADA La Plata sand, which is perfect. It's a cooler colored sand, very natural in color, goes well with the uh, cereal stones. You are my sunshine.
we have Cryptoparva. We've got two types of Rotala, is the Rotala rotundifolia and HRA. HRA will look like this. It will be this red when you use it underwater after a couple of weeks. So this should definitely go into the middle. I will use the rotundifolia around it. So let us know in the comment what do you think about the uh, copy of the copy tank. And we're gonna use this light now to see whether everything fits in there. Voila, the tank is ready. And with that, I will say goodbye. We will fill it up with water. Don't go anywhere before you see the end result, which is gonna be in the green aqua. So we're gonna take care of this tank for the first three or four weeks. We're gonna change the water daily. We're gonna introduce the fish so that our client, our dear friend Gary, not the teammate Gary, because he's here and he would like to take this home, right? Would you like this, Gary? No? Maybe. Maybe? Maybe. <laughs> not enthusiastic enough. I hope that you guys are enthusiastic enough though to push that like button, to push that bell button to get notified of the future uploads and to become a channel member to support the video production. We will see you next week. Goodbye.